the COVID test is from 10 to 2? Yes, sir. We're live. Uh, Mondays are typically considered the hardest day of the week. Uh, but while we've been under quarantine and battling through COVID, it's been a whole lot of Mondays. Uh, but we're so grateful that Monday is always on the other side of Sunday. And Sunday is symbolic of resurrection. Nobody said the road was going to be easy. I just don't believe he's brought us this far to leave us now. I'm thankful that uh, you've allowed me to interrupt your evening uh, for a dialogue and a conversation that I think uh, will fully outright whatever it is you've been glued to on Netflix uh, and the drudgery that we've all been bombarded with on uh, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. COVID is real, corruption is not extinct, but Christ still reigns supreme. I want to ask that uh, you would enlarge the circle of this conversation uh, by doing what I ordinarily ask of you and that you would uh, tag somebody, tell somebody, and text somebody. Ask that you would share this. Uh, there is no Monday night football, so this is uh, Monday night conversation. <clears throat> My uh, executive pastor is uh, on uh, with us on uh, tonight, and uh, I just uh, felt compelled early this morning. Uh, he fell in my heart and in my spirit uh, that we would have a, a conversation uh, from a, a larger perspective uh, and from a different uh, world view, from a different uh, generation, so that we could help he interpret the times. I uh, can see exactly what God is saying and why the earth seems to be responding in such a fashion. Uh, I know all of us have been inundated uh, with uh, what we have seen in uh, social media, what it is that we're experiencing on cable television, and it is uh, near and almost uh, numbing uh, that you uh, really can't go on. I, uh, went on today saying I wasn't gonna watch the news today uh, because uh, I just needed an emotional, psychological, and even uh, a spiritual say a moment from it. Uh, those of you who are just uh, really strained and stretched uh, to the regard of uh, what it is that we have uh, been experiencing and seeing, uh, put some hearts on the screen for me quickly uh, and uh, come on in the room before uh, we put on scuba gear and go into a deep dive uh, to really search out uh, the treasures of uh, what it is that we have uh, before us. Uh, we're going to begin in just one minute. In just one minute, we're going to uh, begin the conversation uh, and the dialogue. I want you to come on. Uh, I'm going to do something uh, special on this weekend uh, that I don't want you to miss. Uh, on Friday, well, uh, let me back up. Uh, we dealt with mental health, and I brought in uh, my sister, uh, Dr. Tamer uh, Brian Davis, to help us uh, just have a seat on the couch. Uh, I did uh, the Saturday before uh, Mother's Day uh, conversation with Dr. C. I just want to talk to my mother. Uh, and then uh, last week, uh, I did a dialogue uh, uh, with uh, my father, Bishop John Richard Bryan, uh, on daddy issues. This coming Friday, I'm going to do something I have never, ever done, ever in life. This coming Friday at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to have a conversation with my daughters uh, and uh, hear from them about what it is that they've been feeling and what it is that they have been experiencing. I want to invite parents to watch this with their children uh, so that they can uh, have a whole nother perspective about Black Lives Matter, about protests, uh, about marches, about riots, about the church. Uh, these are real Gen Zers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we're going to have a discussion with them Friday evening at 6.30. Uh, so parents and children, uh, I want you to please uh, pull up uh, a seat. 
uh, as uh, I have a uncut, candid conversation uh, with Grace Angel on the door. I'm telling you, it's going to be beat the Disney Channel and Nickelodeon uh, used to be T Awards all wrapped up in one. Uh, many of you all have not had an opportunity to cast glance uh, at their whimsical personalities, uh, but you are going to be amazed, as I am, every time that I talk to them. Uh, Pastor Lemons, thank you for uh, uh, taking some time on your day off. I know you have uh, been resting all day long. <laughs> Oh, we don't we don't we don't do that in new birth, but I'm I'm happy that you're throwing that out there like we rest. <laughs> I, <laughs> we start uh, the lens. I had a conversation uh, sometime last week. I, now all of my interviews are running together. But I had a conversation last week and I said, uh, Pastor Lemons, that uh, Minister Farrakhan is now 81. Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson is 79. Reverend Al Sharpton uh, is 64. I am now closer to 50 than I am to 40. And I'm still considered the young, per young preacher uh, in, in civil rights. And I said in this conversation uh, that there's a whole nother generation uh, that has to come behind to really uh, take this mantle and uh, move us forward uh, in holding up uh, the light light. Uh, of the body of Christ in this sacred space of the pursuit of justice. I, I want you uh, to just talk about what uh, is the conversation, the dialogue uh, with your contemporaries uh, juxtaposed with all that is taking place uh, in the earth in this season. Uh, yes, sir. First off, let me just say, Pastor, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity on this platform uh, to speak to uh, this particular audience. Right now, Pastor, I believe that um, our generation, millennial that is, is rising up to serve in a more significant way. I am reminded of David who uh, shows up and asks a very pivotal question, is there not a cause? Wow. Our generation, Pastor, is looking for something to get their hands involved into. We uh, want to be the church by serving. We want to be the church by be going beyond the four walls of the church. So we are, I believe, Pastor, inspired by the ability of what we can do in our society. Right now, my contemporaries, my colleagues, my friends, those who co-labor with me in the gospel are looking for something that the outcome is uh, we can see the fruit of it. We can see how the communities are developed. We can see how lives are changed. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to face a giant head on and uh, we are trying to slay it as best as we can. Well, with this uh, changing uh, reality that the church will never be what it was the first Sunday in March, uh, that everything has shifted uh, what are, uh, for your generations, the hopes and fears about the future of the church? Our hope is that it, it does change. The word season is not a bad thing. It, uh, it is a sign that we must be adaptable. We, uh, we must be fluid. And I think it is good that we can even uh, metamorph into something even greater. Even our scripture tells us greater works will you do. So our hope is that we can stand on the shoulders of our previous leaders, full for tears, uh, civil uh, rights activists and go forward from what we have learned, gleaned and seen from them. While at the same time, one of our greatest fears is that we don't wanna be thrown pastor into the fire without the proper tools and resources. Uh, just because we are pastor at a stage uh, where we are adult, family, uh, we have family, homeowners, we're starting businesses, it doesn't mean take your hand off of us. Even yeah. in the sense of ministry, pastor, uh, we have great pastors and leaders, but just because we are emerging and rising uh, to the next place that God even wants us to be, that doesn't mean that we are leaving our pastors, but we still need to be discipled. We still need to be mentored. We still need to be coached. So I think that one of our greatest reservations, Pastor, is that we're pushed out without someone still 
still guiding us. I love it. What would you say there are a lot of uh, older pastors who are really feeling like a deer caught in headlights? Like, maybe my season has passed. I don't know how to adapt to this new normal. I don't know what a ring light is. I don't know how to keep my iPad up on a stack of books. <laughs> I'm not figuring out what online giving really represents. Uh, I want you to say a word, not to your peers, but to uh, older uh, pastors who are very concerned about this shift that seems to be happening at the speed of life. Yes, sir. Um, I, I would say let's uh, let's not walk in the sense of um, fear, reservation, or intimidation. Uh, it's okay to Google it and ask questions. We are still students, but we may have some things that we can teach. And it's okay to ask and inquire on how to use social media to win souls, on um, how to use electronic giving to to reach the masses beyond passing the envelope. Uh, just because it's different doesn't mean it's demonic. I grew up an apostolic pastor, a uh, very, very strict apostolic. And there were so many things that I was taught that I could not do when I realized that it just because it was different uh, doesn't mean that God couldn't use it. So I think uh, creating all pastors, I would encourage you to have a cadre of young people and young in business, uh, young in ministry, uh, young in desire. And it doesn't mean by age, just by aspiration and begin to use that group um, as a think tank and a, a thought leaders group to help steer your ministry into the next place. A lot of pastors, I believe, uh, pastors who are at the senior level, uh, some of them are really not drying out. Some of them are just not using the resources that they have because they're so used to carrying the load all by themselves. I believe personally, Pastor, that some pastors are really getting ready to go into their second win, but they won't get the second win, Pastor, if they don't utilize the support that they have. I am reminded of uh, my biblical scripture of Moses. I am reminded of uh, Moses, who who is better with someone else holding his hands up. Wow, that's that's our generation. Our generation is to hey, listen, we this is not necessarily our war, but we can help you win it if you allow us to hold your hands up. And that's okay. what we want to do uh, for our senior leaders, sir. No, I, I love it. I uh, I want you to say a word. I am seeing a spike in uh, these COVID numbers. Uh, and uh, I want you to uh, share uh, with uh, the body about our COVID-19 task force, uh, why it is that we have one, what it means, uh, and what is the charge that has been given to them? Yes, sir. Uh, we have new birth that is under the leadership of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryant have comprised and developed a, a task force team uh, that is not singular to the church only, but what we have done is we've invited medical professionals, uh, physicians who are uh, directors over the hospital, Emory University, epidemiologists uh, from the CDC to begin a conversation about how we serve members and guests throughout this season and even how we consider coming back into the sanctuary as an official uh, re-entry process. We do that with grace and we do that by gleaning their wisdom and intellect in the conversation. Pastor, really, as of right now, I think it's very important to begin having a real conversation with others outside of the church world to one, make sure that when we walk back into the uh, sanctuary, we show that we are concerned about our saints, um, our visitors' safety. Another thing is, is that we are fully aware of what's going on in our society. The Bible is clear, we perish for the lack of knowledge. And it is clear that um, there are those who are outside of the scope, if you will, pastor of the church who can help us um, with, with being most effective with serving our um, our members, our guests. 
um, our church parishioners. So right now, Pastor, we're meeting with them and they are sharing with us how we can effectively serve people. And what we're doing at New Birth, and I encourage everyone who is watching this to share this, because soon to come New Birth will have a manual that we are going to have available so that ministries can get information on how to walk back into the church efficiently and effectively. Uh, our pastor, through his vision, really steers in a way of helping people, not only helping people, but helping churches. Pastor Justin, today we had a meeting uh, with our, our task force team. I'm in partnership with uh, the wonderful Elder Stokes and intentionally uh, we ask and listen uh, to, to the input that they provide. And today, we found out that we have seen just in this Atlanta region area, we've seen a, a 12 to 15% spike within the last seven days, sir. Amazing. Within the last, within the last seven days. And we have found that we have 550 new cases, Pastor. 550 new cases. Of course, we want to worship. Of course, we want to gather our members together and we want to high five. <laughs> we want to come and slap the altar, but we also want to use wisdom. And Pastor, I want to just take a moment, if you don't mind, just to applaud you um, and appreciate you for your level of sensitivity in this season. As we have, I believe, some 12 to 14 weeks outside of the sanctuary. I know it's been rough for me, Pastor. <laughs> it's been torturous. Nothing short of torturous. I, I, I need your prayers and God's grace. Now, that there are many at their own peril who are rushing here in and going to church. Let me say on record, because I have not, uh, we are not going back into our physical sanctuary uh, at this time or in the foreseeable future. Uh, until our number drop. Now, uh, we are intentional to be high tech and high touch. And uh, because we're not going in the sanctuary, we're trying to be creative and innovative and strategic as to how we can come together. This Sunday is one of the ways in which we're going to do it. It's our second time doing it. I'm excited about it. Nobody has done it on this wise. I'm calling it a masquerade mass worship. Masquerade mass worship. It is a pull up parking lot service, but these masquerades uh, masks are not over your eyes, it's over your mouth. Uh, because of the numbers that uh, Pastor Limits has just said, up to 500 a day, uh, we want to underscore the value and the significance of wearing your mask. Uh, but Pastor Limits, you have uh, been a running point guard for us in uh, the organization uh, for our. Uh, masquerade party. I want you to tell uh, everybody what it is that we have in store. Yes, sir. So uh, if I may pass, so let me go right back to that thought on COVID. Uh, what we're doing in this task force is we are pivoting. We're in the same position, uh, but yeah. we just adjusted. And that's where we are. And that's how we're doing it, even with this pull-up experience. It's going to be a party, everybody. So if you are anywhere near uh, the Atlanta area, that means Florida, North Carolina. South if you are in Florida, do not come. If you are in Florida, do not listen to college limits. I want you to stay right there. If you are in Florida, you are not welcome this weekend. We want you to stream online. We would be glad to have you. Florida, you all are the hotbed in the epicenter. And this Sunday is not a healing service, it's just celebration. So we're asking you to please, Florida, Texas, uh, please, and uh, Arizona. If you are in Florida, Texas, or Arizona, we want you to watch from home as other people can't get there. Go ahead with your invitations. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Florida. Yes. So listen, if you are not in Florida, no, we want to extend an invitation to everyone that can to be a part of this experience. It's going to be a pull-up experience uh, like no other. I promise you, Pastor, what God did um, at our Pentecost service was absolutely phenomenal. How many souls were touched, how many testimonies that we received. Pastor, this Sunday at 9.30, 
uh, yeah. the party is going to start where we're going to have a 75 minute worship experience to touch the hearts of people. This is the realest thing that you can really get to a, a sanctuary experience. If you can feel it. People are honking horns as a sign of hallelujah. They're falling out in the back seat because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, it is an amazing time. And I want to invite you and also Pastor, I definitely want to share this about that day. Is that evening, Pastor, what we're really excited about in hosting is our night of worship. It's going to be a night of worship. I want you to talk about the first part. I'm going to talk about the second You're going to talk about, okay. You, I, you deal with the first part. I'll deal with the second part. I'm, I'm, I'm a centurion. I'm in authority, under authority. You got it. <laughs> So listen, I want to I want to invite everyone to this particular experience. It is going to be it is going to be phenomenal. Uh, you can register by going to newbirth.org. It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. And you are I, registering it, but it is free, everybody. Please. And I'm coming and I'm coming to it, Pastor. It is free. I wish I could I wish I could echo even louder. It is free. So we want you to tell your grandmama, your big mama, your uh, mama Nim, your aunties, your cousins. It's going to be a celebration that we want to uh, come in mass number four. And I want you to decorate your mass as best as possible. Swag that thing, y'all put the drip on it, bedazzle it if you want to. It's going to be a phenomenal experience. Pastor, what you going to do with yours? I'm just going to have a plain one from CBS that's light blue. I'm... I'm I want to hold the standard of what it is that the Dr. Fauci would have us do. I'm going to let yes, all sir. of y'all decorate. Yes, sir. I don't want to win. I think it would be unfair. America, please stand by. <laughs> please stand by. It would be unfair. It would be unfair for everyone. But that, that, e that morning is at 930 in the evening. Uh, our Minister of Fine Arts, Jonathan Nelson, has pulled together an amazing program. What time does that start? So we start that celebration at 8 o'clock. We okay. start that celebration at 8 o'clock, sir. It's going to be amazing. Uh, do you want to roll? Coming? Who's coming? I was going to ask you. No, okay. who's okay. coming? You say it. Okay, you okay. Say so we have, we have none other than our own Jonathan Nelson, who will be with us, and Tiffany Boone. They're going to absolutely blow it out the water. Now, listen, y'all know every Sunday as you've been watching, you've been blessed by our service. So I encourage you to come under the open heaven and hear them live in action as well, Pastor. We have Isaac Curry. I love gonna, it. Who's, hey, he getting in the middle of it. I love it. And he's bringing <laughs> He gets he's in the middle, middle of it. Uh, we also have Rudy Currents, who's going to be with us, and none other than uh, Miss Jacqueline Carr is going to be with us as well, Pastor. I promise you, I'm going to be under the stage by the time the night is over. Listen, I'm going to bring smell and salt. Now, this is the big announcement. You all know New Birth, my staff, my team knows I got one operating rule of procedure. If any other church is doing it, I'm not doing it. We are doing what no church is doing on Sunday. We just got the permit today. I'm excited. You all, first of all, Sunday night is not for us 4th of July celebration because it's the 5th. So it is our Freedom Festival, red, black, and green. We come in there strong, no justice, no peace, fight the power, Black Lives Matter, Isaac Reed, Jacqueline Carr, Jonathan Nelson, Tiffany Boone. Then after that, because of COVID, we got no competition. Nobody else has a permit for it. Nobody else is ready. We doing it. At New Are mm -hmm. y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. We are having a fireworks show. Maybe y'all didn't hear me. Is this Wi-Fi dialogue? We I think a, I think I th <laughs> we have a fireworks explosion. I want you to bring your kids, bring men and them, bring everybody. You've not seen it on this wise. I'm telling you. If you got bad nerves, this is not for you. I'm telling you, if you got anxiety, this is not for you because it's going to be going all the way off uh, Sunday night at our Freedom Festival. Uh, I want you to pull that sunroof back, uh, but stay in your car and keep your mask on uh, because we had to negotiate hard and strong uh, with the county officials to allow us to do it. 
uh, and I'm excited and elated that even in the middle of a pandemic, we can still have this firework explosion. Any, any other thing they need to know about Sunday? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's wrong not to be there. It's wrong. It's wrong not to be there. We want to overextend the invitation for you to come. Uh, there will be food trucks at the evening experience, Pastor. So if you're uh -huh. hungry, we'll have food for you that you can pick up. We will be practicing social distancing. But if you get, you know, you need for your grub, please uh, feel free to come out because we're going to have food there available as well, sir. It's going to be a wonderful festivity. It's going to be a great night. Listen, you're going to have to stay in your cars. We're giving you six days now to pimp out your mask, get a masquerade ball ready. Uh, this is uh, amazing. Listen, news just came out today. Broadway is close to January. So all of your theatrical, artistic instincts, put it on that mask. Make it as an amazing bonding activity with you and your children. Uh, come on and stunt on all of them. What is going to happen is that uh, once you get there on Sunday, you're gonna take a selfie uh, of you in that mask. And we're gonna try to navigate to put you on that screen. We're gonna look for who has the best COVID-19 masquerade mask. I'm excited about it. Uh, I want you to uh, make sure that you're there. Uh, the real uh, danger that is looming amongst us is that initially when uh, we went into uh, quarantine for COVID in March, they said the second wave wasn't going to come until the fall, September, October. Uh, today, a World Health Organization uh, did a global press conference saying it may not be a second wave, it may just sustain. Numbers are absolutely dizzy. Uh, to this end, I'm glad uh, to share with you that on tomorrow, we're doing a pop-up. Who does this? We're doing a pop-up COVID-19 test. Pop-up COVID-19 testing, we're partnering with DeKalb County, 100 Black men of uh, Atlanta, or 100 Black men of DeKalb, uh, and from 10 until 2, you can pull on the new births uh, campus. You all know we already do a big, and uh, you can get uh, tested, and within uh, a couple of days, you'll be able to get those results so that when you come on Sunday, you will have peace about what it is that you carry. Now, uh, do you want uh, Pastor Lim to talk about our partnership uh, with Uber? Yes, sir. I, I, I'm excited just to highlight, Pastor. I'm going to let you pick up. I'm a, I'm a Magic Johnson, this thing. I'm a, I'm a carrier for a little bit, and then I'm an assistant, throw it to you. But I'm excited you. to announce, Pastor, that we have partnered with New Birth in our food pantry initiative. Every week for the past 14 weeks, Pastor, we have seen thousands come to our food pantry. And now, if you can't get a ride uh, to New Birth Church, uh, we'll come pick you up to make sure that you get the necessary food that you need. So listen, if you know anybody who is in need of food, uh, please let them know. And they have no transportation. Let them know that New Birth can pick you up through Uber. Pastor, this is an amazing opportunity. We are not just uh, going to church, but we are being the church. This is really an extension of really what God means on how to minister to people. And I'm appreciative yes. that we get to serve in this capacity in this season, sir. Uh, amazingly, uh, we have uh, a few uh, vouchers, about a hundred vouchers left for tomorrow. For those of you who need a ride, in order for you to ride in Uber, you have to send us an email tonight and our team will send you right back your Uber code. I send it at rsvp at newbirth.org, rsvp at newbirth.org. Uh, Pastor Lemons serves uh, nobly uh, on our staff and a part of our team. Uh, all of you, if you're following me, obviously you know who it is that I am, but I want you to know who are the miracle workers of New Birth are our volunteers. Uh, it's amazing when Jesus turned water into wine, it wouldn't have worked if they wouldn't have moved those cisterns and started pouring the water. It wasn't wow. the disciples that did it. It was the volunteers that did it. And uh, the volunteers of New Birth are a team like I have never seen modeling, exuding, and exemplifying a servant's heart. As you very well know, this weekend is a holiday weekend. As pastor, I'm the spiritual CEO of the church. I was shutting down 
our king's table this weekend. And I had an uprising of anarchy within my volunteer corps to say, Pastor, hunger doesn't stop because of a holiday. We're going to be here. I said, man, y'all ain't gonna make me look bad. If y'all gonna be here, we gonna be here. So the good news is, just as we have done the last, I can't even believe I'm saying this, 14 Saturdays. This coming Saturday, we're doing no less. Now, let me tell you how the hand of God is just massaging everything that we do, all of our efforts, all of our work, all of our vision, all of our dreams. Our vision um, uh, to feed the community went from 300 a month to 1,000 a week to 8,000. We're partnering with World Vision that does um, astounding work all over the globe. Uh, they sent representatives to our church just to witness what it is that we do. Uh, and they were serving alongside us on Sunday. And they said, Pastor, we ain't seen nothing like this in all of Israel. They are coming from literally everywhere. Uh, and so all of the food that they have been donating was supposed to be finished this, uh, this Saturday. And they said, Pastor, because of your heart, because of the work and the smile and the grace of your team and the efficiency of being able to meet all of these needs, we're going to keep giving you the food through August. Now, y'all know what kind of crazy faith I got. Wow. If I can get it through August, I can, I can believe uh, that God is going to keep sustaining us. Uh, my a sister in love in Manchester, England, uh, has a saying that I have uh, co-opted. Uh, she said, uh, every day can be a payday. She said, if you trust God, uh, your blessings will not be bi-weekly. Your blessings will not be on a regular pay cycle. Every day yeah. can be a payday. I want to give you behind the scenes. I heard her say, and the Lord dropped in my spirit, you are going to be blessed and prosper in a pandemic. I begin praying every day. God, you got to do something for me every day. Just show me that you with me. Every day, give me some expression of the lavishness uh, that you have extended towards me, Bert, and pointed towards Jamal Brown. Every day, show me something. And you know the covenant I made with God. I'm not asking you to do it. The covenant I made with God is every day he blesses me, I'm given a seed. And I'm not waiting till Sunday. You don't even realize, y'all, that Sunday is my lowest giving day of the week. Every day that God sends up, whether that's through a cash app, where some old lady gives me a couple of $20 in my hand, whether I get an expression of love in the mail, every day that I give it, I'm moving forward because I do not want to restrict or limit how it is that God can give. I know that this Monday this is not a typical church day, uh, but Pastor Limits, I, I want you to talk about the unorthodoxy unorth of God and when it is that God will do something random. He'll do it out of order. He'll do it out of sequence. He'll do it out of schedule. Is that if we trust him for the erratic, he'll do the impossible. Do you believe that? Oh, Pastor, I absolutely believe it. The Bible says that he'll do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think. I, I, I recall a preacher years ago highlighting a story um, on David when he uh, was up against Ziglag. He walks up to it. He's in a tight situation and the scripture uh, highlights. He says, shall I pursue or shall I overtake? And the Lord responds, pursue, overtake, and recover all. He only asked for two things, and God gave him three. Wow. <laughs> God wow. is always going to blow your mind, always when you least expect it. And I think that we have to start walking in a level of faith that we start believing that. I don't know how it's going to come, but I know that it's coming. And, yes. Pastor, I am in agreement for spontaneous blessings, things in the mail, random phone calls. Yes. And I think that we ought to have a spirit of expectation, not just when you least expect it, but I do expect it. Wow. I do expect God to do some things that when he does it, Pastor, it makes people say, when you tell people, you lying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you lying. Stop lying. No, uh-uh. 
I believe, Pastor, I come in agreement with your word. And, and for those who just heard our pastor, for those who are listening in, I want you to come in agreement with his word that this is the season that you will prosper in a pandemic, that this will be your Goshen, that this will be the space in your life where God continues to open your eyes and you see his wonders, even when you see the world coming into calamity, the glory of God will fall, hear me, on your house. The glory of God will fall on your house and angels are protecting your house because you received the word from our pastor. So pastor, I feel like because you said it, we need to put it in our heart, an opportunity and purpose in our heart on how to sow tonight. Because in reality, as we sow our seed, that's how we can uh, look to God for the harvest in our life in even the most unique seasons. I, I love it. I want those of you who are watching on whatever platform you're on, you're coming in agreement with Pastor Lemons and myself. I want you to write on the screen right now. I expect it. Now, whatever comes after that, that's between you and our God. But I want you to write that down now. I expect it. You know what I expect? I expect the hundreds who are coming to New Birth to be tested on tomorrow are going to come back having tested negative. I expect it. I expect that the thousands who will come on Saturday to be fed, nobody is going to be left behind and that resources are going to come in every direction. I expect people who have not gone to church in the eons, who have given up on church, stop having confidence in church, are going to pull up in the parking lot on Sunday. I expect souls to get saved and they're not even at a physical altar, but at an electronic altar. I expect that something is going to break out when I do the interview with my children on Friday, that your children are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I expect your whole family to accept, to be able to witness the signs and the wonders of God. I expect God to unleash money that is owed to you, back checks that are supposed to be coming, which your previous job should have had. The money you have been waiting for is about to be released. Here it is. I expect it. Pastor Levins, before it is that we ask for that seed, I want you to pray uh, for every person who is uh, watching with us on tonight, that their expectation might rise, that their faith may go to another level, that every opportunity, every encounter that God has put in our hearts to orchestrate and to engineer, that they're going to be the beneficiaries of. Would you pray for us now? Yes, sir. Lord, I want to thank you right now for everyone who is watching, who is listening, that is expecting. Lord, I thank you for those who are carrying something that they're ready to birth out. And I thank you, God, that what they're expecting in their head, that they would soon see in their hand. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are providing for those who have been in lack. You are Jehovah Jireh. You provide for us, God. And I thank you, God, for those who are who have been furloughed, that you would be favorable and you would find them in their situation and you would show up in their life. And God, you would give them surplus, not just to sustain them, but abundantly, God. I pray right now for the season of thriving, God. I thank you, God, for everyone who is on this line, as even our pastor said last Tuesday, who is on the line. God, I thank you, Lord, for those who are expecting. God, show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong, Lord, because we are expecting to for you to do the miracle, God. We can rest in peace, God. You said in your word that he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. So, God, I thank you that I can rest in your bosom, even when the world is ablaze. God, I thank you that you are showing up and God, you are providing. God, I expect my family members to come out of this and heal. God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You heal us, God. I expect yes. for minds to be regulated. I expect God for addictions to be broken. I expect God for marriages to be reconciled. Yes. I expect God for my child to get a scholarship that they even don't yes. deserve. God, I expect God for that job that I put in the application for yes. to 
call me back even during a pandemic. God, I expect God for what I put down on that investment to show me a great return on investment. God, I expect God from the everyone that's connected to this church to flourish and be happy. I expect God for my child's GPA to go up. I expect God for love, peace, and harmony. And God, you know what I expect? I expect yes. for me to give you the praise, glory, and the honor even through this. Though you may slay us in some way, we trust you. We will lean not to our own understanding, but we will acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct our path. Lord, we give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor for this simple reason that because you have never failed us before we trust and believe that you can't fail us now and this is our expectation in jesus name we pray amen amen i'm grateful uh, for you i am uh, reminded when uh, god gave uh, abraham a, a, a eerie uh instruction to go uh, sacrifice your only son and uh isaac uh, was uh, uh, given uh, that instruction. I, he said to the servants, we will return. Uh, he expected God to do it. He didn't know how God was going to do it, but knew that they were going to come back. I want you to come into agreement for whatever it is that you are expecting God for. I want your actions to speak a lot of in your words. I want a spirit of expectation. I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I've got the partiality of conviction that God doesn't just bless on Sundays. I don't believe God just heals on Sunday. I don't believe he just makes a way on Sunday. But even on a Monday, yeah. uh, God can uh, do it. I want to challenge you uh, on this night to uh, uh, partner with me in a, a seed of just $42 uh, on this night. That God uh, is going to do something even into the next generation. Uh, all the ways in which you can partner with us to do it are right below it. As that you would take full advantage of it. Uh, those of you who are in the tension uh, between new school and old school, you can mail it to New Birth. Uh, <laughs> those of you who are still finding your way, you can drop it off uh, at New Birth. But I would encourage you uh, when you want to do text to give, uh, push to pay uh, on our own uh, secure website, newbirth.org, or on Giplify. Uh, but I expect it. I'm wearing uh, this shirt tonight, Shift, and I want you to know why I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it because I went through my closet, went through my boxes, and I couldn't find one shirt that said adjust. This is the closest I could get to it. I'm starting a new series tomorrow for the whole month of July called Adjust, that you are not going to have to adjust but the people around you are gonna to have to adjust. Those of you who have become contortionist in COVID-19, keep having to shift your limbs and your mouth and your conversation and your language and your lifestyle and your money. I'm telling you, meet me tomorrow night. This is the introduction of this new series, Adjust. All of us have had to make some unseemly, uncomfortable adjustments for the last couple of weeks, but I am believing God that your season of having to adjust is coming to a switching halt, and everything around you is gonna to have to adjust to the oil that rests on your life. I'm excited. Pastor Lewis, before we close, anything else that you want to share, something you forgot or an observation on your heart? Uh, Pastor, just thank you again for the opportunity. This has been a joy in serving and seeing God uh, lead you, lead us, uh, we are praying for you, Pastor, uh, for those who are watching. Let's continue to lift up our pastor and pastors around the world. They are doing so much to serve the people. And I just wanted to publicly applaud, appreciate, and honor you uh, for your life, sir, and for your influence. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, this marks uh, your six months uh, with me, and you still have your job. So thank you so very much uh, for doing that. <laughs> Tell the people how it is that they can follow you on social media. Hey, listen, friends, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Kylie's Lemons. Um, that is K-H-A-L-I-S, Lemons, L-E-M-O-N-S. Um, I would love to get to know you uh, through the fellowship of my journey as a believer and to also learn more about your journey as well. Uh, I have a family. My wife is Tiffany Celeste and my daughter's Harley Monroe. So 
on my pages. You're going to get a lot of, of my family interaction, but I want to involve you into my world. So thank you, Pastor, for giving me that opportunity. I hope that I see you on the social media stream so we can continue to make disciples and change the world as God will allow. I appreciate you. Listen, every person before you go to sleep tonight, say yourself, even at the risk of looking it inside, speak it out loud until it reverberates through your home, your apartment, your townhouse, or your car. I expect it. Have an incredible night. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Please don't forget COVID-19 testing in our parking lot from 10 to 2. You don't even have to get out of the car. I'm grateful for Malja Laboratories, Black-owned lab, who's bringing an army of uh, minority doctors and nurses who are volunteering their time uh, to be able to do this with us on tomorrow. Have a great night, my Lord. And please remember, I expect it. God bless you.